Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're making a classic cocktail, the Bellini. An Italian cocktail from the 1940s. Yeah, it's a great drink. Uses our uh, peach puree that we just yep. made. Right. We used uh, white peaches. You want to use white peaches uh, just for the color and the taste. It's a little bit sweeter. They're a little sweeter, and this, traditionally in this cocktail, that's what they use for the white peaches. Mm-hmm. Okay? And typically, the, you'll see recipes with this cocktail also using some sort of peach liqueur. Yeah. Which we don't really favor too much. No, it Not doesn't. Not big fans of that. Doesn't taste as fresh. Uh, we found that using the, the champagne, it tastes a lot better. Yeah, and the two dashes of peach bitters, which is the is the key. Mm-hmm. You want a dry champagne, a brute champagne, um, and we've seen recipes where they have raspberry liquor in there too. Yeah, that's no. even further off. Um, but do a taste test for yourself and let us know what you think. I think that uh, we've hit hit upon the winning combination here. Mm-hmm. Right? Definitely. You got champagne. Yep. White peach puree, mm-hmm. and you can watch our video of us making that and see that, that recipe. And then peach bitters. We're making one glass today, so we're going to use this um, cava from Spain. Mm-hmm. If you're having uh, two people, use a half bottle. If you're having a party, use the big one. Right? Sounds good. All right. Let me get this open, and we're going to use four and a half ounces of champagne. So we're going to measure that out, and what we're going to use uh, to mix everything is we're going to use this mixing glass that has a little uh, spout on the end. The reason is, is you don't want to mix it in the flute because it's going to make it all messy and the presentation isn't as good. Right. So. And once you get to know your mixing glass, you'll, you'll know, all right, if I go up to here, that's four and a half ounces. Mm-hmm. But the first time or two, use uh, measure it out so you get the, the proportions right. You want to be careful pouring because you don't want to get rid of the fizziness. We're going to do an ounce and a half of the white peach puree, and I'm going to—I usually pour in about an ounce and three quarters, just because I think about a quarter ounce gets left in the flask as you're pouring it out. That smells good, doesn't it? It does smell good. So again, when you're pouring this in, like Phil said, you want to um, be careful not to pour it right in the champagne or dump it in all at once, because it's going to foam up, and then you're going to lose a lot of your the effervescence of your drink. So pour it in slowly. You want to pour it right along the side so it just kind of eases itself in. You don't get all the, don't lose all the fizziness. You look like a chemist. I know. Pretty fancy, you know. And then we just sort of, we don't really stir this as much as fold it in. You just kind of turn it over a bit like you're making a mousse or something like that. Mm -hmm. Souffle, maybe. And you can see even with the gentleness of it, it, it fizzes up a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't take a lot of stirring, just kind of get it evenly distributed. Yep. And then in goes two dashes of peach bitters. One, two. Not any more than that. And that just um, freshens everything up, gives you a whole new layer of complexity. And then we'll pour it in our champagne flute. The champagne is chilled. The white peach puree is just made, so it's out of the refrigerator. So you don't need any ice or anything like that. This is a great brunch drink. Sitting out in the patio in the summer, sitting on the beach. Oh, there's a history behind this drink, isn't there? It's a long history, very complicated. It involves Bellini, Cipriani, Harry's Bar. We're not historians, really, but this has a great history behind it, and it's a great drink. So enjoy. There it is. Cheers. <laughs>